Hi everyone, Dr. Remy from Pain-Free and Fit and Posture Size. Today we're going to be discussing the McGill Big 3 Lower Back Exercises and how to modify these to make them more effective in relieving your lower back pain. Let me begin by saying I'm a strong supporter of McGill's work and his views and his invaluable contribution to the fields of lower back pain study and rehabilitation. With that said, however, many people applying McGill's Big 3 exercises are missing some key points and these can be modified and improved to help them with their lower back pain. What I like a lot about McGill's Big 3 exercises is that they do address the basic motion directions of spinal stability, which is flexion and extension, rotation and lateral flexion with the bird dog, the side plank, and the curl up exercise. However, what I don't like is a lot of people using these exercises as well as trainers, personal trainers, rehab experts, are using them inappropriately as the basis of the entire rehab program for their patients or their clients. This was never meant to be so with these three exercises. They're basically three foundational or beginning exercises that take a low load approach to activating muscles of spinal stability and we need to keep in mind that many people doing these are lacking the specific corrections for their unique body. They're not taking into account their postural deviations, their various mechanical issues that they have, and this was never meant. McGill in his writings speaks of fine-tuning these exercises, and we need to take these exercises and bring them into a specific not only direction for people's unique biomechanics and posture, but also for their daily activities. With this in mind, because so many people are using these big three exercises as the nuts and bolts of their home back rehab program, I'm going to discuss three modifications with each exercise to amp up the value of each exercise and address several mechanical issues and faults that many people with lower back pain suffer from. So let's get on to those modifications. So the first exercise is the side plank or side bridge where you're laying on your side and lifting your hips up off of the arm and shoulder. Many times does not address the fact that many people have weak shoulders and abnormal shoulder mechanics and postures. If you have shoulder pain, it's going to be a difficult exercise to do. If you don't have the right stability of your shoulder blade and humerus or upper arm bone of the shoulder, it's going to disrupt the normal mechanics of the shoulder. And that's key because the latissimus muscle runs from your shoulder down across your back and attaches through fascia to your opposite buttock muscle. And this oblique strap or strut is essential to lower back stability. We also don't include the abdominal, internal, and external obliques as strongly as we could if we use the modified version, which is a shoulderless side bridge or side plank. We align ourselves up so our ear, shoulder, hip, and knee are all in alignment. We're laying on the back of our shoulder blade, not on the side of our shoulder, and we're engaging any posture and mechanical corrections that we may need to make our bodies as symmetrical as possible. If you don't know what these unique posture issues are, you can go to either the Pain Free and Fit or Posture Size websites. We have a free body analysis and learn what your RPI, reverse posture isometrics, are. You want to include those corrections and watch out for those abnormal tendencies when you do this exercise. From our stable position where we have put our lower back in a neutral spine, we're going to emphasize tail under tension or pubic bone up tension, not any additional movement past your neutral spine position, but tension to engage the abdominals and that's going to help to relax the back muscles a little bit and help us to engage that top glute or buttock. So we're going to isometrically tense or squeeze that buttock and we're going to hunch our shoulder down towards our hip. And that's going to highlight that tension of our latissimus and our buttock and that diagonal or cross strut to help with our stability. From that position, we're going to make sure that we have our lower abdomen bracing ready for a punch, our lower tummy pulled inwards causing multifidus activation in our lower back. If you have a multifidus problem, you need to learn what that correction is and use that as well to maintain proper form with this exercise. And then we're simply going to lift the hip up as we maintain those tensions. If you don't have enough strength to lift the hip up, as long as the hip gets a little lighter on the ground, you're going to feel tension along the bottom side of your abdomen and the bottom side of your lower back. And from this position, we're going to add more stronger rotational component, which is keeping our nose and toes moving as one unit, our whole body stable. We're going to rotate forward slightly an inch, hold, and then backwards a little bit. 
And you'll notice I'm not having my torso or pelvis move any more than its corresponding segment. The whole body from nose to toes rotates forwards and backwards. And this engages a lot more of the oblique muscles. It really tenses that lat and that glute from a rotational component and helps add stability to this side bridge exercise. The typical mistakes to watch out for with this exercise is if you have a tendency to hip hike or torso side lean into one side, you want to make sure that side is placed down first so that when you turn over and face in the direction, you're not contracting the muscles and the soft tissues that are typically tight on that side. If you have a rotational problem with your posture, make sure that you maintain it throughout this exercise. For instance, if you normally have a pelvis that rotates left and a torso that rotates right, you want to maintain that correction throughout the twist of going forwards and backwards. You're maintaining the same correction of pelvis and torso in relation to one another as you go. This is also strengthening the neck. Some people don't have enough neck strength, so you can place a hand underneath your neck, acting like a pillow, to relax the head into as you train your lower back stability. So the second exercise in McGill's Big Three is the bird dog. And it's performed from a quadruped position where we extend opposite arms and legs. And this produces a nice challenge of extension because gravity wants us to drop our arms and legs, lets the lower back extensors, the hip extensors work as we're doing this. It also challenges slightly rotation as well as lateral flexion. The lateral flexion component is on the standing leg which typically wants to hip hike and the rib cage of the arm that's up likes to hunch down into there creating a compression on that side. So the correction is trying to keep the hip down or level with the other side as well as the rib cage up so it's level from side to side. Unfortunately, this doesn't address the hip complex in terms of stability, nor the sacroiliac joint as well as it could be done. So this modified form that we're going to use is in a standing position, where as we stand on one leg and avoid the typical tendency of hip hiking and torso side leaning, that's going to create much more of a stability benefit for our sacroiliac joint and hip joint, and then we're going to use hip extension by squeezing the buttock, making sure we're not overarching the lower back by keeping the tailbone tucked under and emphasizing glute contraction. We're also going to emphasize in this position avoidance of external rotation of the leg, try to keep the leg in a neutral position, and then as the arm comes up. Now we have a lot more balance in this position. If we want to make it even more difficult, we're going to rotate from the standing hips slightly forward. Now again, if you notice what I'm doing, I'm keeping an alignment between my ear, shoulder, and hip. So I have a total neutral spine. Nothing's changed compared to being upright, except now I've pivoted around my hip. That makes a great hip challenge, sacroiliac joint challenge, makes the bird dog a lot more effective, a lot addressing a lot more stability components than in the quadruped position. And the third exercise in McGill's Big Three that a lot of people out there are doing is the curl up which is where we're bending one leg at the beginning stages of this and simply elevating the rib cage up. That's great for decreasing load on the lower back, safely activating the abdominals without much flexion in the spine. However, what it neglects to do is address some key components of many people with lower back pain, which is an anterior pelvic posture where the tailbone in the normal standing position is higher than the pubic bone, as well as an anterior glide syndrome of the hip, where because there is a dysfunctional stabilization of the hip joint, the hip bone, or greater trochanter of the femur, has a tendency to slide forward in the hip socket, disturbing lower back mechanics through this anterior pelvic posture. So what I like to do with this version to amp it up and increase its effects for lower back pain sufferers is to perform this with the legs straight and emphasize the gluteal component or contraction to hold the hip bone of greater trochanter, that's the bone on the side of your hip that you can feel with your fingers, it's the hardest prominent aspect on your hip, and it's about the size of a golf ball, you can go to the back of it with one finger and the front of that ball with the other, and what you want to do is you want to tense the buttock so as to draw or tense that hard ball, that greater trochanter of your thigh bone, backwards in the hip socket towards the floor. As you do that on both sides, you're going to emphasize a little bit of tail under tension, which is going to activate the abs and pulling the pubic bone up, and then move your curl up. Again, with this curl up, you'll notice I'm adding neck stability. 
Many times lower back and neck stability come together in the same person. So we want to make sure we're emphasizing a face towards the back of the head tension, a slight chin under the jaw tension as we then curl up. Now, because of posture that many people have, slump posture because of typical fascial restrictions and tightness in the body, many of us are used to slumping down and curling up is similar to that motion in terms of bending the body forward. So I like to emphasize much more tail under tension using the abs to pull the pelvis under as well as 10%, and if I'm tensing 90% of tail under, only 10% of rib up with this curl. And you notice it's a very short motion, it's not a lot. And that way I'm decreasing the effect of the hip flexors by using my glute to pull the greater trochanter back. I'm highlighting the abdominals ability to pull the pelvis up and I'm decreasing the effect of trying to hunch the ribs down towards the pelvis. That's just 10% of the motion as I actually curl up. And I'm also increasing spinal stability by increasing my neck stability of holding my head back and my chin under. That's a lot more of a total effect of the kinetic chain from your hips, your neck, and its effect on your lower back. Now the typical mistakes with this exercise or if someone has a posterior tilted pelvis where the tailbone is actually lower than the pubic bone, you would not want to emphasize an actual tailbone under motion with this exercise, but simply hold that tension as you perform it. Another common mistake is a rotational pattern where some of us have a tendency to roll one leg out or another leg out more than another. You want to try to keep your feet together to train your hips to be in a neutral position. Also common is a rotational or torso rotation pattern where we have a tendency to turn one leg to the side and the pelvis away from that leg. If my right leg is used to turning out to the side, my pelvis likes to turn to the left. So I want to make sure I keep my pelvis rotated into the side that my leg turns more out on. I also want to make sure that my torso is not twisted one way or another while I'm coming up so I can use both sides of my abdominals symmetrical. That goes back to setting your posture ideally for you and your unique condition so you're training proper posture and symmetrical mechanics to support the overall healing benefit of this stabilization exercise. So try plugging these three modified versions of McGill's Big Three into your home rehab program. You're going to be stimulating many more stability factors than just the limitations of doing the Big Three by themselves. Again, remember the Big Three is a foundation for a full rehab program for your lower back based on an analysis of your unique posture, movement, and mechanical issues. If you'd like to go to the painfreeandfit.com website, we've got a great analysis there that's free that can help you get started as well as many programs that are customizable for your unique condition. Hey, if you like this series and would like to learn more lower back healing exercises, feel free to subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of great exercise programs as well as modified stretches and pain relief exercises available. If you'd like to help me share this valuable information with others, give me a thumbs up below. I hope that this series on McGill's Big Three helps you with your lower back pain.